slight delay on kicking off, but we are underway now. Um, you are, my name is Jess Darouche and I'm the Marketing Manager here at Connective and today I am joined by Marcel Madola who is our Victorian Sales Manager. Today Marcel will take you through some of the capabilities of our award winning software platform. Last year Mercury Software was actually awarded the best IT platform in, in, in the industry at the Australian Broken Awards so we do have a lot to get through today. Um, now there's no way that Marcel can go through everything that Mercury can do in the next 30 to 35 minutes, but he will do his very best to highlight all that our platform can do for your business. Um, before I pass over to Marcel, I guess I should explain where these webinars have come from. Here at Connective, we, we have been hearing from, from some of our brokers, from some brokers that you're experiencing frustrations with your current aggregator supplied software. Um, maybe your software is impeding your growth or, or you're pulling your hair out trying to get things done. Um, Mercury, as I said, is an award-winning platform. It's a complete business management tool and our brokers are very happy with it. So we just wanted to take the opportunity to, to showcase all that, that it has on offer. Now before I hand over to Marcel, I just wanted to go through a few of the housekeeping bits and pieces. Um, we do have a lot to get through, so please, as Marcel navigates through our software, type your questions into the questions box you should be able to see and Marcel will answer all of your questions at the end of the presentation. Um, we do ask if you're not already on mute to please put your phones on mute. Um, and without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Marcel Madolo to take you through Mercury, our software platform. Here we are. Thank you, Jess. What a glamorous introduction. Hi, guys. Hopefully you can all hear me. Um, if you can, please say yes. Good. You can all hear me. Lovely. All right, guys. We do have a lot to get through today. Just further to what Jess was um, just talking about. Please, by no means, this is not a training session. It is a demonstration, so I will get through it fairly quickly. We do have a lot of content to cover, um, and like Jess said, if you do have any questions, feel free to, to pop them into me. I do have access to them, and from time to time, I will be referring to those questions um, and trying to answer them all in a some sort of order that makes sense to both you and I. All right, guys, let's get underway. So today's demonstration is all about software to support the growth of your business. What we will actually be covering today, there we go, just waiting. And from time to time, guys, you will see that I will slow down, just waiting for the screen to catch up because I can actually see the screen that you guys are actually looking at. So again, big thank you for your time today. It shouldn't take more than 45 minutes to an hour. That's including questions. Uh, what we'll be covering today, so the areas we're covering today is first and foremost a basic navigation of Mercury show you a little bit about what it does and how it does it. We'll touch on key things like the importance of your data within the system. Obviously moving on to the CRM capabilities contained within Mercury. I'll tell you all about our famous one-click compliance uh, and we'll close the day off with uh, some reporting and, and some management tools here with regards to your business and, and really finish off the day driving it home with training and support. So the key area here I wanted to touch on um, First and foremost, um, just toggling over to the system as we speak, when you first log into Mercury, this is actually what you will see. There you go, hopefully you can all see that on the screen. That is the dashboard, that's basically the landing page upon logging in to your secure version of Mercury. So just a little bit about the basic navigation. Um, it is a system that can run your whole business and I will stress that it's merely not just a CRM tool, it actually does do your whole business. Um, it, was a, it was a software platform that was designed by our brokers. Um, so it actually does have the input of brokers in the industry day in, day out, telling us about the features they want and the features they need to run their business. Yes, it's been built in-house by Connective. We have a, an IT team of, um, of five that actually just sit in our office day in, day out and write code and develop systems like this, obviously, for Connective. Um, so it, is been, it has been built in-house, it's driven in-house, but it's all built by the feedback from our brokers. Um, so again, just giving you a general overview, um, I'll quickly go through some of the tabs. So like I said, you've got your landing page there being your dashboard. That shows you a couple of quick graphs there. You can see with regards to where your records are actually sitting within the CRM, where your opportunities are sitting. Uh, moving across, you've got a uh, run through there of uh, a quick display of where your commissions sit on that bar graph in the middle. Over to the top right, we've got some quick links through to other key areas and service providers within the Connective umbrella. 
moving down the bottom there, bottom left, you've got a recent list of your opportunities. So you've got seamless and, and convenient click through from this page. Moving across into the middle, you'll see a breakdown of your, your to-do list or your tasks as they appear. And then finally moving over right across to the bottom right hand corner is a link through to your calendar. So not only do you get your tasks, it actually launch them up in a calendar type view as well. Just moving across some of the important tabs, we've got the uh, second tab across which is the news and events. Uh, so you've actually got the ability there to see what news articles have been received by Connective and published on our website. Um, obviously from that we uh, then put that together at the end of a week on a Friday afternoon and we uh, are famous uh, or renowned for issuing our, our weekly bulletin which is a, basically a clear concise snapshot of all the information that's come out through the week from the lenders. Then in turn we turn that into a Connective TV YouTube clip that we issue out on a Monday. But all of the relevant content, and this is what I'm getting to, all of the relevant content is actually seen on the website day in, day out. If you need to see something more urgently, you don't necessarily have to wait till the end of the week. Moving across, you've got a, an option there for some internal news that you can actually capture within your business, but also the upcoming webinars, which I'll touch on a little bit later, what the webinars are about and what they involve. Another important area is uh, our documents area. Not only is this the area that we keep all of our merge templates and merge documents in the system and, and, and collated together, we'll, the next option down is also an area for lender documents and forms. So the ability there is to be able to pick up whatever lender form is required without actually having to jump in and out of Connective's website, i.e. you don't have to jump into CBA's site to get CBA's latest 100 points ID form. You can actually jump around within the document library within Mercury and be able to pick up that information from there. Moving across, again, one of the other one of the other key tabs within the CRM system or within the Mercury system is the commissions area. Uh, so without sort of spending too much time on here because there isn't too much information, obviously not being in a in a live broker's file, there are some key areas with regards to, in this case, commission splitting. So the system actually does have the access to split commissions to third parties as directed by you as brokers or agreement holders. So the ability here is to go through the system and be able to actually build in a payee. So a payee here that I'm going to select for the moment is Alma Fudd. Alma Fudd's automatically being defaulted with a 90% upfront and 90% trail split of any commissions due. So that's phase one. Phase one is obviously building the payee. Phase two is implementing that. So I've actually got the area here. And again, there's no live information here, so unfortunately I can't show you this. But in a perfect world, what would happen there is you'd actually see a snapshot of all of the upfront commissions Connective is currently processing on behalf of a broker for that given month. And it's a matter of going through, selecting which particular, which particular loan you want to split that commission of. Once you're in there, you allocate, in this case, Alma Fudd, and that would instantly allocate 90% of both upfront and trail across to that particular payee. Before you set up the payee, you need to put in things like uh, BSB and account numbers, also um, ABN details. And not only do we pay those commissions across out of your commission, so it saves you being an accountant one day a month, what would happen in this particular instance is, is Alma Fudd or, or your referral would receive 90% and an accompanying uh, tax invoice to show that they did receive 90% and that gets paid directly to their bank account. And then being the owner of the loan, so to speak, you'll actually get the balance or that remaining 10%. But as the owner of the loan, you'll actually see both areas. So not only will you see your RCTI showing your ownership or your 10%, if you will, you'll also see the outgoing split being the 90%. Now, moving forward, you can actually give your referrers access to, to a portal where they can view all this information themselves. At that instance, obviously, only being a third-party referrer, they would only have access to their 90% or their equation or their, their, their portion of the loan, I should say. Obviously, you as the owner have, have access to 100%. So, guys, that is a very, very brief overview of what the system does. Now, I'm going to drill down more specifically into some of the key areas. Now, and I want to start off with this admin area. This admin area is really... Well, one of the things, one of the major things I want to touch on here is, is the ability of, or the, the thought process of your data. So at Connective, we are very, very passionate about making sure that 
your business and your data is all run your way and you have complete control of it. And like I said, whether that's from a business level, an agreement level, or a data level, this is what I'm talking about. So from, from the get-go, within this administration tab, first thing you'll see is, if I move down to the data option, the ability for any broker at any time to export their raw data. So they are not locked in or governed by their aggregator to their database. They can actually take their database and move it across, whether that be to for external backup reasons, whether that be because they're looking to use that data in a, in a separate system that works alongside, let's say, an accounting system or a financial planning system, whether it be to move it across to an accounting system. Whatever the reason is, you do have the ability to export your raw data at the click of a button at your convenience. Following that, you've also got the importance of being able to actually run your own client or data import. So if you've got your client in a spreadsheet, you've, got, you've actually got the ability to import it directly into CRM seamlessly without any fuss and ultimately without any costs. Um, and again, it's not captured there, it's not governed there, because at the end of the day, once you do an import, should you ever want to export that data, you are more than welcome to. So it's all about the ease and the convenience of transitioning data. And ultimately, it's all working towards having you work the way you want to work and not being told how to work and being able to ultimately hit that, hit that final result. Just talking about data and seamless transactions, or seamless, sorry, seamless transitions, what we do have, and I'm, I am just going to jump around here a bit, guys, so please forgive me. I'm actually going to pull up an opportunity. It potentially could be one of many. No, just the one. <clears throat> there you go. Hopefully you can now see that on your screen. There we go. We do have the ability from Mercury to be actually able to push the information or a snapshot of this loan across to an apply online platform. So obviously that's that intermediary platform that enables you to not only get it on or keep it online, but gives you the ability to submit off to almost 20 lenders at this stage through the apply online platform, as you're probably already aware, hosted by NextGen. So what happens from here is there's a snapshot of this particular loan. I do have the ability with the push of a button, again, easy, convenience, one click, I can from here start an apply online application. So what that does is that, that's that seamless transition of data from a, from a personal and from a loan opportunity point of view to be able to collect that information, collate it, and push it across into an e-lodgement system or an electronic lodgement system. The bonus here is that wasn't good enough for Connective, so we've gone above and beyond. We've actually got now, hopefully you can see that button on your screen. I'm going to hover over it. It's over to the right. It should have highlighted orange. That's actually a backfill, or as it says there, populate Mercury loan application from an actual apply online application. So what we now have is two-way transitioning of data or two-way integration of data. Not only can we push from our CRM into apply online, that again gives us the option to, to submit to, very, to, to a whole 18, 19, 20 odd lenders. It also gives us the, the ability to now actually back populate that information. Guys, being an ex-broker, I am going to go out on a limb here. Let's be honest, once information is being given to a bank, and for whatever reason, the bank wants a submission or an alteration to the submission done online, or unfortunately, the loan's been declined for whatever reason and it needs to be cloned across and moved to another bank. Let's be honest, the simple way of doing it is through the apply online system, the last, the very last option before it needs to now be sent off to a new bank, let's be honest. What we've now got the ability to do is once that's done easy, conveniently, through that online system, you've now got the ability to actually back populate that into Mercury. So again, at the push of a couple of buttons now, we're really talking four copies of, of the one application. One with the old lender in Mercury, one with the old lender in the system, obviously duplicate that across to the new lender within the apply online system, and then have the ability to back populate that back into Mercury. So your CRM is always up to date according to your submission levels. Um, security of data obviously is uh, uppermost here at Connective. Uh, this, the data is actually backed up four different ways. Not only do we hold it here internally uh, within the actual office, within the walls here of Connective, we also hold it at a specified data center within this building. We also have two uh, off-location sites, um, one in the data center and one in, a, one in an office as well. So the, the data is actually backed up four ways, so it is safe and secure. 
we went, we actually ran a test or a dummy crash late last year um, with the data being or the, the website being crashed, it being re -up, re uploaded back up and running within a four hour turnaround. So a nice little contingency plan there should things go haywire. You've probably noticed by now, yes, it is web based. What does that mean? Conveniently, you can pick it up anywhere you have access to the internet. So it's not loaded to a machine. Um, for those brokers who are always in and out of cars, you know, you always hear stories all the time that a laptop gets left on the roof, the broker takes off, before you know it, the laptop's broken, unfortunately can't work for a week, doesn't exist. You can pick up Mercury from any computer that has internet access. For those, uh, for those technical heads out there, those tech heads as we like to call them, um, not only is there obviously that web-based facility, perfect for, for, um, for sharing loans within the office, perfect for admin, internal brokers, external brokers, off-site, um, contractors, whatever you will. You've also got the uh, access through to Mercury through all the new gadgets. Um, so not only is there an offline version as well, for those of you who haven't got internet, there is also the fully-fledged iPad, iPhone, and the Android applications as well. Obviously, the, the phone application there being a light, so it is limited, uh, but the iPad and, and some of the Android applications are just about fully-fledged. Um, so virtually, you can do everything on there. Um, now, for what it's worth, for those of you who do potentially have issues with not having access to internet, um, I know when I, I'm out and about on the field doing my demonstrations of, of Mercury live to brokers, um, me and, and the rest of the sales team around the country, we basically all handed in our, um, our data dongles and we're all using our iPhone. So you can actually uh, use the iPhone as a wireless modem um, and Mercury being such a the way it's been designed, the way it's been built being such a, um, it's basically not taking or not requiring a whole chunk of data to run. Um, it does have the ability to run very easy and very seamlessly through the, uh, through the capability of the wireless modem on any iPhone, uh, whether that be something, uh, whether that be something as, as old as an old data, uh, sorry, as old as one of the original iPhones or one of the iPhone 4s. So it's not data in intensive at all. Guys, just moving on, um, that's enough about the whole data side of things. There haven't been too many questions come through at this stage, so I will keep moving on. Again, don't forget, if you do have any questions, feel free to throw them in. Um, now, moving across to the CRM, I have dabbled in it a little bit. I'll um, spend a little bit more time on it. So the idea of the CRM is very easily, very convenient, the input and the ease of, of the data into the system. So I've already shown you things like the ability to import your own list of clients. Let's say we're building one from scratch, very, very simply. And I will actually jump back to the dashboard. So again, this is the uh, initial front screen or the landing page upon logging into Mercury. You will see a couple of quick step buttons, quick start buttons across the top. So again, from an ease and convenience point of view, you don't even have to be jumping around the system. You do have the ability to do the one thing from several different areas within Mercury. So right now I'm gonna go in and start with the, show you with the data import of, a, an, of an actual person. Just waiting for that to load up, there we go. Okay, so as you can see there, I've just gone in to load in a person. The way the system works, it is very, very simple. You can see there's all the big icons up the top. A lot of your menus run down the left-hand side and the main, the main part or the main frame that you're actually working in is there within the main pane of the window. So very simply, it's a matter of working down. Now, I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but I'm going to touch on, if I can, some of the important areas. So just running you through these things like title, first name, surname, middle name, salutation, gender, date of birth, marital status, dependence, all of the important stuff, guys. This isn't rocket science. It's nothing new. Moving across, you've got the abilities to put in phone numbers, uh, mobile numbers, business numbers, fax numbers, things like that. I'll show you a couple, like I said, some of the uh, key elements. Just trying to type in a phone number here while I'm talking. You hopefully should see there in the middle of the screen, I've just imported a phone number, and you can now see there is a little icon, a little phone there that has now come to life. If I hover over it, you can actually see that it says, it comes up with the ability to send a text message. So yes, one of the key features of a CRM system, in particular now Mercury, you do have the ability to be able to send out a text message from the system. Okay, uh, you do pay for the text messages, um, depending on the euro, because they are actually purchased as bundles in euros. They can be anywhere between six and eight cents each, obviously depending on the price of the euro for any of the brokers out there interested in world trade. 
Um, so from here, like any text message, you've got the ability to send 160 characters. Okay, so there we are, we're going to send it. The question hasn't come up, but I'm going to go down this path anyway. You do have the ability to actually register your phone number as a mask to the text message. So right now, with the ability of sending out that text message, before I've sent it out, through the admin tab, yes, I can mask that number. So even though it's coming from a third-party supplier, yes, when it reaches the intended recipient, i.e. your client, they actually know that the, the text message has come from you, the broker, providing they have your number saved, of course. Upon them replying to that text message, yes, it will actually hit your phone. Now, if I just, again, jump around the screen, if I come down now to the notes area, you can actually see that within the notes, there is already a note there loaded, that note there denoting that it was a text message that was sent out today's date and time, and it's actually contained the content of the email, oh, sorry, of the, uh, of the SMS. So guys, what I'm getting to here is, again, a true CRM system has the ability to capture everything. Um, so merely more than sending out that text message, all of a sudden the system has done all the work behind the scenes to capture that information and display it there from a CRM point of view, from an NCCP point of view, obviously tracking everything, every, every touch point with your client. Moving down, you've also got the ability to add in tasks. Actually, sorry, I will, I will go back to the details and finish off on this area, guys, apologies. Just moving across there, so like I was saying, the ability to, to load in various and multiple contact details, things like email addresses as well, obviously. Similarly, if you type in an email address, by launching the email there, an email is actually sent from within the system. Yes, again, the ability to track the content and the material is instant through the CRM. Um, addresses, employment history, things like that, everything, yes, that is captured does get moved across through to apply online. Uh, that question's come up. So everything that we capture, yes, does get pushed through to apply online. So again, it, it, it's helping with that data transition, the integration of data, without the need to having to copy and paste or having to key it in again once you've already done it once in the CRM system. Another key area here, moving to the side there, is categories. So you actually have the ability, while you're importing a client, to add them to a particular category. So as you can see there, there's a pre-populated list that we have actually built ourselves according to our business and our business's needs. So I'm going to select this particular person as a Collingwood supporter. Did I hear some boos? I think I did. All right, so this particular person is now being tracked as a Collingwood supporter in my CRM system. Why? It gives me a neat, easy, convenient way to be able to segment my database at a later stage for a marketing purpose. Now, obviously, you've got the ability to market to particular clients at an individual level or at a loan level. So assuming now this individual is a potential client and I've got tickets to a Collingwood game and I want to go out and woo or schmooze some clients, I've got the ability to hit up my Collingwood supporters with some tickets to, to the next game. Alternatively, if these guys were already attached to a particular loan for whatever reason, I've got the ability to run to work through the loans or the opportunity side of the system to again segment my client base and be able to, to tackle them in exactly the same fashion. All right, running through, just to continue and just keeping an eye on the time. Um, so the notes, very simple. I'll show you quickly, not only have you got the ability to, um, to go through and, and Yes, there are the automated notes, but you can actually go through and put in your own notes. So here's an, my own note I'm going to put in. Um, co contract of sale received by a client. Very simple. I've kept my note from a compliance point of view. All right, yes, a little bit sketchy, but you get the idea, guys. It is up to date. I can date stamp that, and you can see exactly who it's been edited by, the date and the time. So again, all my records are up to date. At this stage, before I save the note, I'm going to do two more things, two crucial things, and you'll see the benefit of this, hopefully. Moving across, along with this particular file note, I've actually got the ability to upload an attachment, assuming the attachment now is an actual copy of that contract of sale, which my note was just referring to. So by selecting a file, you can see your browser box there appears. It's a matter of going through your desktop or wherever your client folders are saved. There you go, it's appeared on your screen now. You've got the ability to go through your browser box, find where that file has been saved momentarily, upload it and actually save it either to the opportunity, to the record or to the note specific. So I'm going to bypass this particular stage. 
Okay, I can then come back to the details area. Hopefully you can see that little checkbox at the bottom. If I click on that, it actually denotes sender's email. So what actually happens is this note, both the content and the attachment, now turn into an email. Why? Again, for those of you using your CBAs, for those of you who have access through to your uh, lender BDMs and they're happy to upload or, or send information on your behalf through to the credit team or to the processing team, you can now not only send this note and the attachment, or not only the note, but the attachment as well, through to the bank directly. So if you're looking at a TPG paperless at cba.com.au, again, you can do three things, keep a compliant note, uh, have the attachment, and ultimately get that result, like I was saying before, the result getting it across to the bank to get a formal approval for your client. You can now do all three steps very easy, very conveniently from this CRM system. I won't send that, I won't save that, but obviously all that being said and done, yes, it would automatically save a copy of that attachment and obviously denote that that email was actually sent out of the system. Moving down, you've got the ability for tasks. So not only can you create tasks ad hoc, you do actually have the ability to, the ability to import a bulk set of tasks. So from there, uh, you do have, like I said, and uh, hopefully I'm not speaking out of school here, but let's be honest, to a certain degree, a lot of the loans follow the same process. Yes, you chase the documents, you lodge them, you hopefully get a conditional, you chase some more information, a VAL, funds to complete, you then get a formal approval, then you chase for docs, get them signed, returned, certified, settled. Very, very simple in a nutshell. Um, so what this has the ability to do is not only load in uh, task by task ad hoc, you have the ability to load in a set standard or set template of tasks. So at that stage, what you can do is one at a time, uh, you can actually apportion them or, or delegate them out to, to other people within the office, um, and you've got the ability to set time frame or due dates on those particular tasks. And like I showed you initially, as soon as you log into the, the dashboard within, when you first log into Mercury, you'll actually get your to-do list for the day. Um, so you've got that ability there. Just quickly, I'm just going to uh, dummy up a, a task here. And what I want to show you is you actually have the ability to, to, to delegate this task across, like I said, to someone within the office. So at this stage, I'm going to delegate that task to a third party. And just as I save that task, you'll see that little prompt box appear in your screen. Now, there it is. And it says, do you actually want to send an email of this particular task across to that delegate? So this is on the assumption that right here, right now, it's 11.30. Um, I've delegated that one across to Tim, for argument's sake. Tim has already generated or printed off his to-do list, so this particular task that I've thrown in there to be done today obviously won't have appeared on his initial potentially printed to-do list. Yes, if he goes back in and refreshes, he will see it, but sometimes that could be missed. So the system has the ability to be able to send a prompt email or a reminder email to say, hey, Tim, by the way, this task has just come through. Please make sure you action today. Okay, so I've got that ability as well. In this case, I am going to say no only because I don't want to bug Tim. And like I touched on, yes, you do have the ability to upload, scan and attach emails, uh, content, all of the above across to this particular area now within, still yes, sitting within an opportunity, sorry, still sitting within a contact, but I do have these same features within a contact and within an opportunity as well. So very simply, if I want to attach, again, I can attach from a folder. You'll see your browser box there appears on your window. Here we are. It's just a matter of going through and selecting that particular document or content that you want to upload and store that safe against here. Yes, it's all saved as cloud technology. Uh, the attachments are unlimited. The actual size themselves are uh, obviously maximum of 10 meg, uh, but nothing stopping you having 110 meg attachments against a particular file. Um, obviously, color, good quality scanners take up more, more megabytes. So obviously, the, uh, not saying of a poor quality, but something like a black and white as an alternative to a color would obviously reduce the, the file size when it comes to uploading. Yes, because it's web-based, again, you have the ability to be able to work remotely, not just having access to your client's information, but also any uploaded scans, attachments. Um, you can pick them up from, any, from anywhere you've got access to the system or the internet, ultimately running towards that whole theory of a paperless office. Guys, I'm just going to get out of that um, <clears throat> that, that uh, contact and go into an actual opportunity now. <clears throat> Pardon me. So again, you can see now from an opportunity standpoint, 
just waiting for your screen to catch up. There you go. The the, the interface or the, or the look of the system works exactly the same. We've got your uh, options up the top. You've got your menus down the left hand side, and the main pane or the main frame of the window is there in the centre. So again, from within an opportunity, you have the ability to obviously put in the key details, things like transaction name. You've got the ability to track admin staff and supervisors. You can record the status of the loan, so you can actually track it through a file status or file management system, if you will. Why? Moving forward, you then have the ability to record on that. Um, you can start tracking things like who the lead source was or who the campaign or what the campaign was that generated this particular client. Um, moving across things like lenders, loan amounts, LVRs, uh, LMI premiums, things like that. And finally, moving across there at the end of that page, you've got your settlement details. So things like our lender references, finance due dates, deposit due dates, settlement dates, fixed rate and interest only expiry dates. So again, all these dates are in there for a particular reason, to be able to report on, segment your database and knowing who's doing what at a given point in time. Guys, like, uh, like any system, the more information you put in, Generally, the more information you'll get back in return. Um, from a true CRM system, the way it's reflected is you can actually add multiple contacts to the one opportunity. So in a real life scenario, yes, there is only one Marcel, but that one Marcel could be attached to many different loans in many different capacities, whether that's in the form of a borrower, whether that's in the form of a referrer, a real estate agent, whatever the case is, you have the ability to put the link in. Okay, so moving down from here, not only can I create at the drop of a hat a new con uh, sorry, a new contact, but knowing the fact that I've already got one in the system or it's a repeat client, let's say, I've got the ability to run the search. I'm going to run the search there. There we are. I can now drag me into this particular loan opportunity. Sorry guys, just waiting for your screen to refresh. There you go. And you'll see a key feature in the system is you can actually denote relationships. And if you select them as formal slash married, as I have done there, not only have I instantly brought myself to this particular transaction, but it's also directly picked up my wife. So it's brought the two of us across to a transaction. On the odd event that you're not looking to do something with a partner or spouse and you are looking to do it alone, you do have the ability to be able to delete them one at a time. Okay. Moving down again, yes, you've got the ability for your notes, your tasks, your attachments, as we touched on before. Um, moving forward, you do have the ability to create calculations and attach the calculations, all the working, a lot of that working progress, a lot of those point of sales tools to set up and bring them in to the actual, um, now direct, directly link those calculations in with this particular, this particular opportunity record. Obviously, the, the basis there is to cover off on that NCCP requirement, all about responsible lending, knowing how you got to that product that is not unsuitable for the client's needs and or requirements. So you've got the ability there. The three calculators touching on areas like, sorry if I get onto the right tab, touching on areas like funding position, so knowing the cost, the stamp duties, the funds to complete, and or what's required from a refinance consolidation point of view. Obviously, your borrowing capacity, linking in your income and expenses for your contacts, and cross-checking them against a whole range of banks' borrowing capacities or borrowing calculators. And thirdly, and probably the, one of the most important ones, is a whole product comparison. So having the ability to go through, um, select particular loans, lenders, products based on the client's requirements, not only select them, but then have the ability to road test them against one another to see which product actually comes up trumps for the client's needs and requirements. Uh, one thing I haven't mentioned, guys, the system, as you probably noticed, yes, very, automate, or very automated, has the ability to do a lot of things automatically. One of the other things it has the ability to do is sync with Outlook. Um, so as your contacts are built into Outlook, they will appear in, in Mercury and vice versa. As you throw them into Mercury, uh, you sync them and they will appear in your Outlook. Perfect world there is you've got the ability to contact a particular person attached to a loan let's say now the conveyancer or the real estate agent, you've got the ability to contact them directly through your iPhone. The idea there being they've been loaded into Mercury. Through Mercury, they've been synced, if that's politically correct, they've been synced across to your Outlook, and then obviously from your Outlook, which you can access through your iPhone or your BlackBerry, you can pick up their contact details and make those calls. So again, it's easy, it's convenient, it's very seamless. 
not only that, it actually does have the ability to capture not only your incoming, e or well, basically not only the content on your incoming emails, but also any attachments attached to those incoming emails. So there is a bit of a disclaimer here. I need to let you know that it does only work with Microsoft Outlook and it's only versions 2007 and 2010, where what you do is you download our free program that we've uh, custom built. Uh, you've got the ability, uh, once that's obviously downloaded, any email that you get in your inbox, again, providing you're using Microsoft Outlook and it's version 2007 or 2010, you have the ability to conveniently, at the push of a button, attach that email with all of its content and any attachments directly across to Mercury. Beautiful thing there is you don't even need to have that Mercury open. You've just got the ability, again, once you've downloaded that program, to do that, um, that sync across. Guys, just before I finish up on the CRM, I just wanted to touch on again some of the um, some of the marketing capabilities. So I'm going to get out of this very quickly within the CRM. You, you do have the ability at a person level to be able to select a particular category. In this case, I'm going to say my Collingwood supporters. There's 29 in that particular record base, as you can see now on your screen. And by selecting all or part of that list, I have the ability again at the click of a button. Hopefully you can see these in the top, where my quick steps are to do a mail merge, an email merge, or an SMS merge. So very, very conveniently, by segregating my database in none other at this stage than my Collingwood supporters, I can do the basic mail merge, an email merge, an SMS merge. Bearing in mind your SMS merge and your email merges, you have the ability to build templates. So you can send the one bit of content. Um, Let's assume every week before a Collingwood game you want to send a, a quick good luck email to all your Collingwood supporters, you can set that up as a generic email template and you then have the ability to send that ongoing every time without needing to script that one email. Same thing with a text message, so let me change things up a little bit. You're sending your client base a text message uh, every month to let them know what the RBA movement has been after the, after the Reserve Bank has met. You have the ability to save any three templates, I'm, I'm using the analogy there of three templates, one being Reserve Bank met today, no change, Reserve Bank met today, rates went up, Reserve Bank met today, rates went down. But what I'm getting at there is every month you don't need to come up or re-script or type that content. Once it's built there as a template, you just pick which template you want to deploy and run with it. Obviously your mail merge facility works exactly the same, but it's done as a document uh, type template, not obviously as an electronic template. Uh, all document templates are built and stored within Outlook. Um, pretty much everyone's got access to Outlook, knows how it works, so it's easy, it's convenient, it's not hard to do. Um, and again, so that can be done from, from the person section or from a people or, or, or um, contact section. It also can be done from an opportunity section. And not only that, you do have the ability, like I said, to segment or filter your database. And again, from an opportunities level or from a people level, you do have the ability to add in extra filters and really drill down and segment onto your particular, onto your particular client for, the, for whatever reason that may be. Guys, moving across now to the one-click compliance. It still is the flavour of the month. NCCP is the buzz word, even though technically it's not a word. But what we're getting at here is obviously, like I was saying, the ability of collating all that information from a compliance point of view. So the information I'm going to touch on quickly first is those three calculators I touched on. The first one being, and I'm, guys, I am going to cheat here. These are some that I prepared earlier. The first one there is the funding position. So in this particular instance, we're picking up an investment purchase. It's for half a million dollar purchase. Uh, we're looking at a loan for 400000 which is an 80% lend, and we're denoting that there's a deposit already paid of $50,000. Moving across, hopefully you can see that in the bottom or the middle right section of that particular page is a summary of this overall scenario. So what it's saying here is not only have I thrown the $50,000 as deposit towards that particular transaction, it's working out the stamp duties for me, the implications, the costs. And as you can see, I've thrown things like additional funds from a gift, uh, $45,000 from other, and also my own savings of $35,000. So all in all, this scenario now works to the tune of $18,000. You do have the ability to get a quick LMI quote, should you need to on this scenario, and you've also got the ability to uh, capitalise that, so it actually, again, mirror images your client's exact scenario. You do have the ability to save that, as I have up the top there. Why? So you can come back to it at a later stage. 
the ability there or the theory behind that is again that ease that convenience of data running your business your way when your client comes back you don't have to go through and build a whole scenario from scratch you can basically pick this one up your client says Marcel thank you can't find anything for 500 let's ramp it up to 550 how does that affect costs LMI government costs stamp duties uh, funds to complete all that sort of thing. So you don't have to sit there and do a recalculation. You can simply open up one you did before, tweak the figure, the system will generate the rest of the details instantly for you. Okay, yes, you'll have to refresh the LMI based on ultimately the new LVR potentially, um, but again, it's the it's click of a few buttons. And again, the idea is, if you you know whether it be something as simple as having a client on the phone, you don't have to go through and build a whole scenario, a whole case for a particular client who really wants to know one question, i.e., if I purchase an investment property for 500,000, what are my stamps going to be roughly? Okay, you know, everyone, everyone here, the average client here is that you know you need 10%, right? We know as mortgage brokers, 90-10 isn't good enough. Um, obviously, you've got to come up with costs, funds to complete, stamp duty costs, things like that. Um, so something that basic should really be that easy for a broker to get an answer for that client without having to need to go through the whole system. Okay, moving you down to the next one quickly is the product comparison. So you've got the ability here to be able to, like I said, initially do a quick run through of some products that are not unsuitable for the client, drag them across as you can see there in a side-by-side -side comparison, and you've got the ability to graph them. There you go and actually road test these. So based on the client's individual needs, so right now it's picking up for argument's sake a default repayment. If the client says I'm happy to pay an additional $200 a month, we can uh, put in extra repayments, $200, let's say monthly, and now see how that tracks over a 30 year term. So instantly we've saved between, there you go, there's a graph, somewhere between five and six years off the average loan, very simple. Again, you've got the ability to save that. Um, what this part of the system doesn't do is if you save that and come back at a later stage, it doesn't refresh. From an NCCP point of view, um, no point having this information that was calculated and done, researched for a client, let's say six months ago, no point in that instantly refreshing when you open it up today. That's not going to be much help when the client wants to know why you gave them that bit of advice six months ago. No point if that's all refreshed and it's now running off today's numbers. But we do have the ability there as you can see, conveniently push of a couple of buttons to copy the existing products and also reload that product with today's fresh details. So you can get a good snapshot of what was done then, how that compares with what was done today. Who knows, the same products might not even be applicable. Contra to that, the same products might still be the better ones today as they were six months ago. And guys, when you do go out and save those records, as you can see there, there we go. Not only does it come up with the client's name or what you've saved that record as, as well as the loan amount, there's also a date created. So very easy and conveniently, you can actually start to see what was what's what and when it was actually actioned. The third one there, very simply, is your borrowing capacity. I'll give you a quick cheat here in the system. You do have the ability to drag in existing contacts from your CRM through to here. And yes, if you have loaded already their income and their expense details, that will instantly not only drag the contact across, but also their income and expenses. Again, saving you have to rekey in that information or do it the good old copy and paste. As you can see there, you get a quick link through. Let me recalculate that, and you can see there. There you go, your screen's catching up slowly. There you go, a list there of the lenders and the maximum borrowing capacity based on that. Now again, all three can be saved, which we do encourage. All three can be printed at individual times. But what I'm going to show you now, if I can, is go back to my test opportunity within the CRM. And what I've done, again, here's one I prepared earlier, from the actual calculators area, I have the ability to not only create new calculators, assuming I haven't done them yet, or assuming like I have now, I've already done them in the past, I can actually attach something from my calculators library across to this particular CRM. So again, from an NCCP point of view, from a compliance point of view, all the uh, information gathering and collating that I've given to the client is now captured within the client's actual opportunity. Okay, and now from here, I can do uh, the next thing from a compliance point of view, which is all about your fact find. In our case, the questionnaires. You've got the ability to launch a responsible lending fact find questionnaire 
directly from the system. Now I want to show you this quickly, guys. Not only can I, I'll list there. Not only can I generate one from here, as you can see, just popping up on your screen now. Not only have you got the ability to go through and answer the questions with your client face to face, whether they be on the phone, whether you be sitting down in their lounge room with them, you've got the ability to enter the information here. Let's say you're not with the client. Let's say you want to do a bit of uh, pre-work or or pre-data collection before you actually go out and meet with the client just to uh, streamline things. You can actually close that as I have done as opposed to submitting it. I can then turn that with the push of a button into an email link. Just waiting for that email to pop up on your screen. There it comes. Okay, it basically turns that into an email that says, Dear Mr. and Mrs. Client, we have created a questionnaire to assist us as brokers to gather information about your situation. When you have a chance, please click on the link below, yada, yada, yada. What I'm going to do now is actually show you what the client sees. Now, just hopefully that's in your site there. Yes. Okay, so this is the landing page the client sees. Yes, it is a test one, so it is actually missing your business's logo in the top corner, which once you import that into Mercury, as part of your enhancements and um, part of your setup, you'll actually see that come across in every bit of communication that goes out to your client. That's automatic. So you'll see that there. You can see it's a responsible, a responsible lending fact find, who you are as clients, who I am as an advisor or broker, and then the client at their own convenience can actually proceed through, as you can see there, go through and actually write their own, or sorry, answer their own questions directly without the need of a broker. Why? A couple of things. One, it's directly from the client. Two, and probably I feel this is more important, is once the client closes that down, obviously has done the submit, not what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to shut that down. Uh, be careful here, almost closed down the wrong page. When that's done and submitted, it will actually backfill those clients' answers they submitted to their questions back into their CRM. Why? I'll show you why, and this leads me now onto the one-click compliance. From here, I have the ability to select a preliminary assessment document. So I've actually got all four there as my one-click compliance wizard, being the credit quote, the credit guide, the preliminary assessment, and the product disclosure document. So all four of these work as templates. Very simply, click that, select which document I want, open that, let that do its thing, and again, hopefully you can now see that in your line of vision. Okay, so there you go. There's a quick look at our preliminary assessment. I'm going to touch on it very, very quickly. As you can see, instantly picks up the business logo. Moving through, now guys, this will sort of jagger at your screen. It'll sort of jump across in different steps. But as you can see, it's been prepared by the clients of that particular address, prepared by that broker on that date. What I want to show you, some of the important things as it moves there, is a snapshot of the client's personal and security information. So there it is. So the, again, the basis here is the more you input into the CRM, the more will actually spit out from a compliance document or any document template point of view. So you've got Mr. and Mrs. there with their uh, respective details. Moving down, you've got a snapshot of that security. So in this particular instance, like I said, that investment purchase for $500,000, showing all your costs and all the funds to complete that you've got to throw against this particular scenario. Moving down, uh, a funding position. So on the back of that, so just backtracking, that breakdown of, um, of scenario is actually done on a per property type arrangement. So let's say it was an investor with three properties in their portfolio. You'd actually get three particular, you, you'll actually, that area that I just showed you moments ago, you'll actually get three areas of those, each breaking down per security. Whereas here, the overall funding position is now a complete summary of the whole transaction. So as you can see, T-Ledger format, picking up your, your funds to complete, oh sorry, your funds required versus your funds available. Okay, moving down, uh, acknowledgement of risk insurance, that's a big key area at this point in time. Uh, give your clients the right to sign off whether they do or don't want to apply for insurance or they want to discuss their requirements further with a personal advisor spots for them to sign. Moving down, there are some definitions, some terminology there that yes, we as brokers take for granted, um, but obviously sometimes the average client does not know these terms, so uh, just some good reading material for them. 
Moving down, brings us to the end of the document, finishes off with three appendixes. Appendix A, there it is, flashing up on your screen, is a breakdown of the questions and potentially their answers or responses put in. As you can see, I never saved any, so none have transpired across. But in a perfect world where you or the client has submitted those, yes, they would carry across. So you've got your questions and answers, obviously from your responsible lending fact finds, Appendix A. Appendix B is your side-by-side -side comparison of the products. Again, trying to find a product that is not unsuitable. Moving down, we finish off with Appendix C, <coughs> pardon me, which you can see there is your borrowing capacity, uh, breaking down Mr. and Mrs. again, their incomes, their expenses, right at the bottom, a breakdown of their maximum potential borrowing capacity rated per client, sorry, rated on, on the client's scenario. So guys, that's the end of the preliminary assessment. I won't go through the other compliance documents, but as you can see, they do work the same as templates with all that information filtering in from within Mercury. Okay. One thing I do quickly want to show you is if I go back to the attachments, as I showed you initially, geez, was what, 40, 45 minutes ago now, that SMS and those emails instantly as they were sent out from the system were saved and captured. Right now, if I jump through to my attachments area, and I'll highlight that first document, you can see preliminary assessment launched or created today on the 19th of June. So again, showing you the automation of the system that any time a doc that document, template, merge document, SMS, email, whatever the case is, if it's generated from Mercury, trust me, it is saved somewhere within the system, again, for your convenience. Guys, you've probably seen by now the whole theory behind the system. I've, I've touched on it several times, but it's all about entering the data in once and being able to use it often, whether that's moving it to the commission side of the system, to the apply online system, or from a marketing NCCP point of view, throwing it into templates, whether they be Word, email, or SMS. It's all about that ease and convenience, enter it once and use it often. No copy and pasting. Actually, while I'm talking about things that there aren't in the system, you won't find any red, red asterisks, if that's even the word, red asterisks in the system. So the system is created that you can load in as little or as much detail as you need. Like I said earlier, the more you obviously load in, yes, the more you will get out of it. But ultimately, there is nothing to stop you progressing to the next level at your convenience. The system won't actually spit the dummy and say, no, you can't proceed forward until you've actually sorted this particular area out. Guys, that's it on the CRM and on the compliance side of things. Just finishing off. Um, all things report, all things reports, I should say. So yes, you do have the ability to manage your business, whether it be from reporting on stats. So if I show you here, you'll see some um, some graphical reporting here on the particular stats. Um, or working through and actually tracking um, your database activity and your workflow management. So you've got the ability to track what tasks were completed, what notes were entered, what emails, what SMSs were sent from the system, whether that be as individuals or as batches and also what dates were changed. So from an administrative point of view, you have complete access to track the full workflow of your business, of your database activity from within Mercury. Moving back one, you've got the ability now, if I can quickly pick one up, just expand on that. You've got the ability to track and report on your lead sources. So at any given time, you can track where your lead sources have come from. Um, obviously, in a world where um, farming versus hunting or gathering from a from a client's point of view, it's always good to know where your next lead is coming from. You know, again, hopefully I'm not speaking out of school, but that's where one would hope you'd put more of your resources or more of your efforts into and actually have the ability to track all that stuff. So see how your marketing campaigns are going, see which of your lead generators or your or your referrers are actually performing, which ones aren't. But in a perfect world, it's to know the quality and the conversion also of your leads. No point knowing that Every day you received a particular lead from a lead source. Um, yes, you're going to think you were busy. You're going to think that was an ultimate lead source. Nothing better than knowing at the end of the year that all of a sudden, uh, let's say 90% of the leads from that lead source actually didn't convert. Yes, it generated some good leads or a good number of leads, potentially not a good quality of lead. So you've got the ability to track that through the reporting area. And like I did say, um, from, from a business management tool, not only have you got access to those reporting areas, like I touched on initially, through the administration tab, you actually have got custom areas where you can customize the system, the CRM system, to actually run and support your business 
the way you want to. So you're not stuck with a system and you have to mould your system or your business to suit our system. No, it's completely the opposite. You've got the ability to, uh, to mould our CRM system and customise our system to suit your business's needs. Guys, bear with me. I just have had a couple of questions filter through. Forgive me, I'm just trying to uh, expand some of those. Yes, like any template in the system, just going back with regards to some of the document templates, the uh, brokers do have the ability to create their own templates within the CRM system. Um, so at any time, like I said, through Word, they've got the ability to download them, custom them, alter them, change them, and then have the ability to re-upload them. So yes, you do have the custom ability to change all of that. We do have the ability for data capture. So yes, you do have the ability to put in encrypted fields into your own custom website. And what that will do is every time you get a, a web inquiry, so to speak, or, or someone's playing around on your, on your website and wants to know a little bit more, you see them on a lot of websites in this day and age. There is a bit at the bottom. Send me your email, your contact details and what you need. We can start capturing a lot of that information. Virtually just about every field that's in the CRM can actually be tracked on a website. Um, we have built a, a website for a particular broker. There is so much information that we're capturing. You can just about have a client load their own um, load their own application pretty much from scratch. That is the quality and the content that we're actually capturing. And like I said, picks up that information, pushes it straight through to your own your own business's version of CRM. So um, sounds like you're excited by that one. All right, guys, just uh, finishing up, just again, bearing in mind the time, just uh, wrapping things all up. Just touching on now the, um, the the training and support. At Connective, we are firm believers of real support and real training. We don't have BDMs that go out there and do what I personally like to call coffee and donut runs. Um, just touching on a, a little bit of background here with Connective, we are one of not many aggregators out there that actually don't tie you into the agreement. So there are no contracts. There are no lock-in terms. There is no way that we say, yes, you can leave, but guess what? We're going to keep your trial. That doesn't exist in our world. Every broker on a connective agreement all has the ability, they all have the ability to walk away at 30 days' notice. Not only that, I've already showed you the ability to take their trial book, sorry, to take their data. Um, they have the ability to extract their data from, from the CRM system. So they're not locked in or governed that if they leave, us as an aggregator, they're going to leave something behind. No, they have the ability to take it with them. And still to this day, we are the only aggregator that enables you to take your trail book with you. And we actually pass on your trail book to your new aggregator or provider. So bear in mind, from that standpoint, Connective has no way, any way, right, wrong or indifferent, to hold on to a particular broker to our clients. So what we do believe in is real training and real support. Because why? We have to earn your business every month every 30 days because what happens at the end of 30 days when we don't support our brokers, they have the right to pack up and leave when they're not happy. So guys, we are firm believers that we do need to earn your business. We're not going to suck you in, lock you into a contract, lock you in and once you're locked in, we forget about you. It doesn't exist here. We have uh, broker support managers. They are your support managers. Unfortunately, they're not my support managers. Um, they actually go out and look after you guys. They've got two core two key roles really, to get our new brokers up and running with everything they need to hit the ground running with Connective as a new aggregator, whether that be software training, software setup, or even uh, with regards to the accreditation process um, and, and getting your new accreditations or your transfers up and running ASAP. These guys will come out you and train you, tailor, tailor build your Mercury to make sure it fits your business. Not only that, as I mentioned initially, Mercury has been created and developed internally by our magnificent IT staff. You do have actually, you actually do have live access through to that team. So if you can see in the top corner, hopefully you can see that, there is a little help button. Doesn't matter where you are in the system, that button is sitting there in the top right hand corner. That is your help desk button that gets you directly through to one of the five IT developers and they'll actually get onto your problem ASAP remotely through that, uh, through that help desk ticket. So not only have you got access to trainers like myself or all the, all the broker support managers or directly through to the IT department. Uh, what we actually do, and I touched on this before in the news and events tab, we actually run regular webinars. Now, not only live webinars, very similar to this, obviously at that point we run as a, as a training session, so a lot slower, 
in a lot more detail, covering a lot more direct content. So virtually each webinar covers each one of those menus up the top. I've covered all eight today. So they break that down and run them over a 45 to, to an hour session. Not only, like I said, do we run live ones over a fortnight, we actually record them as well. So at any given time, if you can't make today's recording, or sorry, today's live webinar for whatever reason, you can watch the last recording we've done. The IT boys actually upload that and, um, and, and manage that as well. So guys, that's the end of it from me. Hopefully that gives you enough of, a, um, enough of an insight about Mercury, the way we operate. Just touching on a couple more questions that have come through. Uh, touched on that one, touched on that one. Um, is it exclusive only while with us? Just, I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm not quite sure what that means there. Um, but yes, while you are with Connective, that's another clause in our agreement. It is actually a non-exclusive agreement. The condition there is providing you, you hold your own Australian credit license. Um, you can deal with Connective, uh, and it's not, an, it's not an exclusive agreement. So you can deal with us and other groups other lenders, directly, indirectly, by all means. Well, guys, we are here to help you run your business however it is you want to run it. We are not here to tell you how to do business. Yes, um, someone's touched on, we do have a white label offering. To know more about it, please um, give us a call. We'll get myself or one of the sales managers out there to give you a little bit more of, a, of an update about all things connective as well as some of the ancillary products that we do offer. Guys, that's it from me. No doubt after an hour, you're sick as I am of the sound of my own voice. I'm going to pass over now to Jess. If you've got any questions, I will hang around for the next few minutes if they come through. Uh, if not, guys, again, really appreciate your, uh, your time this morning. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Marcel. That was absolutely fantastic. Um, now, of course, there's no way that Marcel could drill down to the level of detail that you may want to see, um, but I think he's given you a fantastic overview. We are incredibly proud of our Mercury software to be awarded Best IT Platform in the industry last year and now finalist for 2012 as well. We're very proud. Um, a member of our broker relationship manager team will call you over the next couple of days just to get your feedback. We're always looking for recommendations and improvements on our software, so we'd love to hear what you had to say about it, um, what you liked, what you didn't like. Um, but if you'd like to get in touch with us in the time being, please call us on 1300 656637 or email media at connective.com.au. Thank you so much for joining us, Marcel. Thank you so much for your time. You're a very busy man. And um, I've run out from Connective. Thanks all. <laughs>